much will be what? Required. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, even more will be asked. Now, listen carefully. Many reject this declaration of the scripture by all manner of human bias and maybe what they call rationalism. But their rejection cannot, you know, alter the reality of accountability. The human race is accountable to God whether you want to deny it or not. Whether you want to accept it or you don't accept it. God has given so much to the human race. We are so developed, intellectually sound, physically strong, more than any other being, you know, species on earth. And to him, which much is given, much is required. Now, I want to tell you this. The more of God's power you have, the more God expects from you. The more of God's resources you, God gives to you, the more God requires from you. That's why sometimes people make a mistake asking for God's glory and God's power in a dimension that is so high, but what they want it is for themselves, so God cannot give it to them. You want uh, Catherine Krumah's anointing, but you don't want to go outside. You want it just for your family. You want it to enrich yourself. You want it for your bank account. You want it for your pride. That's why you can't get it. If God gives it to you, and you keep it somewhere, you're not using it to better the lives of people around you. The certain thing is that if God gives to you, if he starts making demands of what he gives to you, you'll be in trouble. That's why you've not gotten it. Because the moment God gives you certain things, he will make certain demands from you. The moment God releases certain things, he will make certain demands from you. He will start asking certain questions. Tough questions, tough questions. That will require hard answers. That's why, have you heard people ask, why me? Have you ever heard people ask, why me? It looks as though everything, God, why? One of the answers to that, why me, is that you have a lot in you. So much has been given to you, you're producing very little. So much has been invested in you, but you can't see the fruit. Jesus held a tree accountable when he came and he did not see any fruit in it. Why not, why, the reason why Jesus held the tree accountable because he knew that the vine dresser put a lot of strength in that tree. Apparently, apart from the strength the, wine, the vine dresser put in that tree, Jesus put so much expectation on that tree as well because it was beautiful from, from afar. How will I put so much expectation and now come my expectation because short. Accountability is something that you, is a reality that you must wake up to if you say you're a believer, you're a child of God. Now, accountability is essential for any society to function. Any society that does not have accountability is For example, let's think about this country where we find ourselves. Do you hold your lawmakers accountable? Do you know that's why the country is like this? Hello? Hello? Look up to me here. How many of you know the council chairman of where you live? How many of you know your local government chairman? How many of you know your House of Rep, State House. What of the Federal House? Do you know that if these people come for town hall meetings three times, they will do better? Because if they come the first one and they mob them, second time they mob them, whether with question or physically, 
The third time before coming back, they will do something. How many of you know that? Because there is no accountability, no one cares. That's why they live in Abuja. And there are reps here. I wonder how many reps live in their location, in their constituencies. When there is no accountability, the society is in disarray. But it's not just a one way thing. How many of you pay your taxes? That's why you should never expect good roads. That's why you should not expect electricity. Because you're not accountable to the government as well. The government does not know. You do, if you don't pay taxes, the government does not know you actually. You see, it's a two way thing. You know, we want it to be a one way thing. It's a two way thing now. Uh huh. Everywhere is quiet now. It's something we call corporate social responsibility. Some of you don't even know anything about it. You as a, as a citizen, there are certain things you are meant to just do for the society. You don't, we don't know. You know, some of these things, when, they are, when there is no accountability, the society, the institution, the organization is in disarray. Imagine coming to a bank and you come into the hall and you see two staff who are meant to, you know, uh, uh, um, tend you and they are eating. The other one is chewing gum and eating ground nut. The other one is eating of and rice. And you say, oh God, tend me. Sorry. You go to the manager, look at what somebody is doing and he's busy playing game. Are you going to be happy? If no one is held accountable for certain positions, certain offices, and certain things, there'll be trouble. When God created man, God put man in charge. It was lack of accountability that destroyed everything. Actually, the person who fully gave account of what happened <laughs> was Satan. What happened? It was Eve. Eve, what happened? Say that. This happened. This, this happened. I want to also tell you now. Whatsoever God has given to you. If you like, use. If you like, don't use. One day, you will be required to explain what you did with that thing. Jesus was talking about the parable of the talent. God gave. The, the master gave five. Uh, two and one. Surely he will return. It's not a matter of will he, it's a matter of when. But sometimes we play with certain things that are tangible and think we can just get away with it. Now, I want you to start living your life like someone who will, who will give account to God. Your life will be different. Your life will be so much different if you lived your life like someone who will report back to God. When you see Christians who are just living anyhow, they don't think that one day they will talk to God. Though. They don't think that one day they will give account to God. Though. You know when we talk about this judgment day, a lot of people are thinking it's just about telling God I, did, I sinned there, I did not sin there. It's not true. Your life is already weighed in a balance. That one is not true. What we're talking about, what have you done? Now, we're all accountable in one way or the other. Now, listen. Let me show you why, one of the reasons why you're accountable to God the moment you break certain laws, you pay for it immediately. True of us. Will ignorance be an excuse for it? Let me give you an example now. A small child that does not know the power of electricity, whether he likes it or not, is accountable. If he touches a naked wire, he's going to die. That's why you should not remain ignorant. Ignorance can destroy people even in innocence. Hello? You know, some people will say, 
what I don't know will not kill me. It's not true. Sometimes what you don't know will kill you fast because you did not suspect it. So refuse to be ignorant. Now, every individual is responsible for his or her own behavior. Nobody has that responsibility apart from you. That's why sometimes you blame people for what you have done. And God is looking at you and laughing. Everything you do on earth. So someone comes out tomorrow. See, this is what happened. Let me give you a, a short story of what has happened in this our little society. The government is bad. True or false? True or false? Everybody that says that this government is good needs to go for a psych evaluation. The government is bad. There's no hiding it. Whether they like it or not, they don't like it. The government is bad. It's not working. If it's working, we cannot be buying dollar at this rate, whereas oil prices are up. So the government is bad. The government is so bad that the CBN governor is looking to be the president of Nigeria. Why is he the president of CBN governor? That's how bad the government is. But let me show you something. Blaming the government and doing evil because the government is bad is worse than what the government is. Because what happens is that now you have two wrong things. Let me show you. So the government is bad and one and people now come out and say because the government is bad, let us now show the government that we can be worse. You see what is happening? And then when they started, when this killing started, maybe it started with police officers, you know what happened? Because of the whole NSAS stuff, some people were cheering things that are abnormal. When you hear that they, maybe they shot somebody or someone was bad, you know, was shot or burnt, people were literally cheering them, our saviors, right? True or false? They never knew that they were breeding monsters. Today, the people who were cheering have kept quiet. The people who are doing that thing, nobody is to blame. Because we are all in this thing together, seeing that the whole government is bad, but we chose our actions. We chose how we reacted. One of the worst things that can happen to you is when you are in wrong, you shift the responsibility to somebody else. You are responsible for your own behavior as a human being. Nobody is responsible. No matter how much you think somebody is responsible for that, you are responsible for it. Uh, why I did not greet him well, why I did that thing, is because of what he did. You choose how you react. I've seen people poison people because relationships did not work out. But I've also seen people who are still good friends because relationships did not work out how you reacted to it. Someone stole your money. I've also seen someone who stole money and then they still change that person. Or, you know, worse off, they left the person go. Someone still stole money. I've seen people who kill people because they stole money. Is it not in this country that someone will steal five naira or steal hundred naira? People who steal hundred thousand burn them alive. Accountability is as simple as being responsible for your actions. So, Romans chapter 14, verse 12. What I'm teaching tonight is this morning is not, this is something that will just help you as a Christian. I'm not trying, this one is not uh, mysteries now. This is what will help you as a Christian to be a better human being. Romans chapter 14 verse 12 says that each of us shall give account of himself to God. Your excuses will disappear when you appear before God. 
The scripture says, Oh man, thou art what? Inexcusable. Let me tell you the truth. If you face challenges, temptations, trials, there's a basic principle of temptations and trials. No temptation or trial can come to you that you cannot overcome. Are you listening to me? And let me tell you, grace or God has never for one day justified temptation by the weight of the temptation. Why? Because no matter any trial or temptation or persecution you are facing, actually, you can, you can overcome it. If you cannot overcome it, God cannot allow it to come close to you. It's in, the, it's in the Bible. I've never seen any man that God has justified just by the weight of their temptation. Because God can never allow you to face something you cannot overcome. With that, you will find out that you have no excuse. There is always a way. There is a way for victory somewhere. There is a way for you to overcome somewhere. So if you give excuse, you are just giving him the power. So easily. Just like I said, Adam tried to blame Eve. Eve tried to do this, this, and that. And they did all that. And you see what it cost them. If at the beginning, these things were not acceptable, excuses were not acceptable, today, excuses are still not acceptable. And the worst part of it all is when you have individuals that cannot admit to being wrong. When they can't admit, they can't repent. And when they can't repent, they can't seek God's forgiveness. And when that happens, God cannot forgive them. And when God cannot forgive, my God, they are in trouble. That's where you now see human beings who were once Christians enter into what we call reprobate mind. They can't confess their sins. They just go away with it. Sometimes I ask myself, what happens to pastors after they know the truth and they, they deviate entirely from God's word and they still hold the Bible? Let me tell you something. I found out that you see that man that you think you are better than. If you don't guard your heart so much, you can be worse than him in the next one month. You see that man you think is so evil? You know, you, in your heart now, you think you cannot kill. In your heart now, you think you cannot murder people. Right within you now, there are certain things you think you cannot do. It's not true. You probably can. You probably will. After all, those people who are killing now, three years ago, they will tell you that, ah, gone, take blood, do this, do that. It's not possible. I've always said this, that when we ask God that the currency God gives us, a lot of times when we pray for certain things, is opportunity to prove those things. Oh, God, I cannot kill. Don't worry, opportunity will arise unless you. God, you know I will not do that. Don't worry. God told Jesus was talking to Peter. He said, You are going to deny me. Peter said, No, I cannot, I cannot deny you. Jesus just said, I've prayed for you. Don't worry. When the opportunity came, uh -huh, he proved it. You know, at that time, they already. Judas Iscariot was already identified. So he was feeling, he was doing grass now. A lot of Christians today do not fear work. But what they actually fear is accountability. They don't mind working. They don't, want, they don't mind getting themselves involved. 
But the only thing they are scared of is accountability. I don't mind singing in choir. I don't mind being an usher. I don't mind doing something in church. The only problem I have is if I want to go, nobody should stop me. Do you understand that now? The only problem I have now is that if I want to do this, I don't want somebody to tell me that. If we remove the accountability, the workforce will triple by 200%. Let's try it. Nobody is accountable to anybody. In fact, from here to here will be quiet. And then from that street to the end of nursing will be protocol officers. Yes. A lot of people want to work. But the problem is that nobody wants to be accountable. That's the fear. Accountability. It's, a, it's an inborn, uh, engraved fear in the heart of people. People asking after what I did. You know why? Because man, inside of himself, the, the man that has not been regenerated is rebellious. You know, when you, when the scripture says that all have sinned and fallen short, that fallen short is you have rebelled against God. So it's inborn. You don't want authority over your life. That's why when they, while you were small, if they say sit, you stand. If they say stand, you sit. Man wants to do the exact opposite of the instruction that was given to him. True or false? Have you not found out that if they tell you not to do something, that's the thing you want to do most? So the fear is not working. The fear is not doing something. The fear is being accountable. We fear and hide from it. Because we don't want to give people our plans. We don't want to give people the choice to dictate our lifestyles. We don't want to give God the choice. You know, some people will say, I, you see, I love the concept of God. I like, in fact, there is a God, I understand it, but he cannot dictate my life. No, why, why should I dress a certain way? Now, I love God. I can come and worship and cry and do anything. But just allow me to do what I want to do with my life. So, listen to me. If we open, we open door, the church is open for everybody. Definitely. But if we remove the tenets of the scriptures and the principles of the scripture, the number of Christians will triple. Because normally a human being wants hope. What scares people is the accountability part of it. The accountability part of the gospel is what makes people skeptical. But without accountability, you can't achieve something qualitative. Why do I mean that? Now, you see the number of buildings falling in Lagos State. You hear someone, uh, a building fell, a building fell, a building fell. No accountability. You can't build something that is against the law. Nobody will come to check it. People say Christianity is collapsing. I don't think Christianity is collapsing. But the state of the Christian nation is because there is no accountability. Even somebody on, somebody on Facebook is being pastored by another person on Facebook. You don't know the person. You don't know the person. They're just saying, Mama, Papa, Mama, Papa, Mama, Papa, Mama, Papa. You Papa yourself into hell. Papa yourself into hell. Mama, Papa, I love you, Daddy. I submit to you. The person, the, the, where he's typing, I love you, Daddy, is in a hotel room. Of accountability. That's why sometimes someone will grow. And he's looking for somebody who is very far to, to mentor him. Because he doesn't want someone close. Who now tell him, my friend, come back. What you're doing is not good. Yeah? They will look for mentors outside. Somebody who will not, because if you have a mentor close by, who is seeing you, he will tell you, you should not be doing this. No wonder some of you need mentors outside. outside. No, not somebody who will be telling you, directing your path and that. But you see, in Christianity, the scripture says that we are sheep and the Lord is a shepherd. We are accountable to the shepherd. Because even the sheep in their innocence can wander away. But they need the rod and the staff to bring them back. Accountability is actually for your own benefit and not for God's benefit. Accountability is for your own benefit and not for the leader's benefit. If you don't understand it that way, you will feel attacked by accountability. A lot of people feel attacked by accountability. 
Hey, why are you going there? Then you feel attacked. This man is suspecting me. Ah, my leader is suspecting me. You know, sometimes, maybe I uh, say, Anna, how much is that thing? Uh, are you now saying that I'm stealing your money? Are you now saying I'm stealing from you? How much is it, my brother? I'm not, you're not a thief, but how much is it? No, no, we are not saying that, but it is to help you. Because if we don't help you, you will kill yourself. For example, they built, a, they built vehicles and said that the speedometer can go, at much, the gauge can go up to 240. But the same people who approve vehicles will tell you that this road is 100. This one is 160. It's not because they don't want you to drive fast, but they know that the moment you start hitting 140, the steering becomes so light. It's more thing you crash. You are saving you, but you say, no, just leave me. Mm. Let me drive. You drive and drive yourself into. <laughs> and then we'll come. You just wash the tire and then we'll come and say, he was a good man. He was a good man. He was a good man. He's in a better place. Someone who's in a better place might be. Just an illustration, please. Amen. Accountability is, is important for maturity. Accountability is important for what? Maturity. Now, you, one of the ways you would know a mature Christian, a mature believer, is how peaceful he feels being accountable. Peaceful. Peaceful. I'm telling you my... I'm opening up to a leader... I'm telling a leader, I'm accountable to a leader. It's peaceful. For you to grow and produce godly character and fruit, you must be accountable. Now, what is accountability? Accountability is a checks and balance system to protect us from harm. So the main reason for accountability is actually protection. So for example, when you come to your house and you have little children, there are certain things you don't keep around. True or false, if not one day, that child will even take a knife and put it in the mouth. True or false. When you have a gun, do you put it outside? One day you might come back and find out that your, your child thought your gun was a spoon and put it in the mouth. The main reason for accountability is to protect us from harm. But also for protecting us against ourselves. Someone say ourselves. And also protecting us from others. Sometimes we are protecting you from yourself because if you allow yourself to do everything yourself wants to do, sometimes you'll be in trouble. Hello? Hello? Someone listen, look up to me here. If you allow yourself to do everything that comes to mind, you'll be in trouble. True or false? You know, sometimes our minds can wonder regardless of how spiritual you are. Hello? Regardless of location. You might be shocked. Someone who is sitting in the church now, his mind is in the pit of hell. Hello? Uh, we, you know, we as pastors, we have seen a lot. So sometimes, you are accountable to protect you, your, you, yourself. From yourself, not even an enemy. From your own self. Now, we do this by being open to what we are thinking and doing so that we can receive encouragement and reproof when needed. So, we be open. Now, listen to me. Some of, some Christians think they are skillful, intelligent, cunning, or crafty. That craftiness leads you in a pool of, eh? 
not misery, in a pool of, it leaves you in Sodom. Let me use that word. It leaves you at the boundaries of Babylon. But people don't understand. You know that what is, is, you know that your mind is messed up. You know that sometimes people are just close to, to, you know, to the trigger. Close to switching off. Close to going away. They will just be acting all spiritual. Everything is okay. It's not true. One of the things you need to be open about is what you are thinking. One of the things you have to be open about or accountable about is what you are thinking. Sometimes you see people change overnight. In one week, this person was doing this. In the next week, this person was doing that. Thing. That person did not change. Go and watch. For three months, that thought has been in that person's mind. Sitting like a can of bomb. Just waiting for the day to explode. But they're not open about it. It's not just about your action. Sometimes it's about your thought. Pastor, I'll be very frank with you. This is what I've been thinking for a while. It's only someone who is open that you can know how to help. Sometimes people will tell you the truth and leave the juicy part of it and just tell you the truth so that tell you what they need to tell you so that you can be okay. You know, sometimes I've met people and they will ask, hey, what's, what's happening? This person is being buffeted by the enemy. But he will tell you everything is fine. In fact, the other day I went for evangelism. God has been helping me. And he will not tell you he's struggling with certain secret sin. He will not tell you he's struggling with a wicked heart. And these are the important things he needs to open up about. But actually, he does not want to be seen as a sinner. Actually, he does not want to be seen as somebody, how can you be a pastor? How can you be a leader? And you are thinking such a way. Hey, don't, don't, don't do yourself this kind of harm. Even the Pope has evil thoughts. Those thoughts, they creep in one way or the other. You know what I'm saying, the Pope? Because it's called His Holiness. You have to open up to people. I'm not saying that you should be I will just speak. Hey, you just think that, hello, church. I need to tell you what I'm thinking right now. Uh, you are foolish. I'm talking about being accountable to someone or your leader. Christian accountability is accounting for what we are up to. It is the realization that we are liable responsible and answerable for our actions in life to God. You know, some people even want to lie to God. Let me show you why, how some people want to lie to God. You know you are defied on the inside. You come, you come to church, you dress all wonderful. And then during the worship, you give the greatest level of emotion. But inside of your heart, you know you are not even connected. You know you're disconnected from God. You even want to lie to God. You want to lie to yourself. Everything is okay. In fact, you want to use service to cover up everything. Nobody can help you except you open up. Nobody can encourage you except you open up. Nobody can correct you except you open up. You must be accountable to something. You know, sometimes we have, in fact, I think this generation has the highest level of Sunday, Sunday Christians. I come to church on Sunday. Pastor, I'm your member. I know a lot of members that I don't even know. After Sunday, Pastor, I can do anything I want to do. On Sunday, I come, uh, do, I do my thing and I go. No wonder the enemy is winning that battle in your life. Let me tell you, one of the least battles the enemy can win in your life is financial battle. So you think you are doing okay and then the enemy has left you. The enemy can actually give you money so that he can be with you. So don't think that that's the ultimate battle. No, 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 no. Because some people will now say, my life is okay because I can eat, I can provide for my family and also provide for people. I'm fine. That's not true. 
Sometimes Satan will give you what you want to take what he wants, your soul. You need accountability. You come to church, you are looking nothing like, 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 like a Christian and you think it's all right. That's why you withdraw. Now, one of the ways you will see people that are backslidden is because they've withdrawn from the garden of the brethren. They don't want anybody to look at their lives. They don't want anybody to ask them, how far? I didn't see you in church. How far? This is what you're doing. You know, sometimes when you see our members outside or you see your brother outside and you greet them, they will throw out their face as if they don't know you. You know why? Because they want to do whatever they want to do in that street. Hello? Is that not true? The day you will see a brother and call him brother or ah, sister, they will look at you. See, respect that thing. Call me NK. So they don't want to be tagged. They don't want to be identified as, you know, brethren. Lack of accountability. But that's why the enemy is winning that war, that battle in your life. Because when you open up to people, people can stand in the gap for you. People can watch over your life. People can say that this place you are going is not good. It's always good to open up to people who have passed the same street you passed so that they can give you direction on on how not to make the same mistakes they made. If only you learned from the wise, you will have little mistakes in your life. But you don't want to learn. You don't want anybody to talk to you. If you are accountable, you have had some mistakes in your life, some critical decisions in your life, you wouldn't have taken them. If only you were accountable. The scripture says that we should not be wise in our own world, understand, we should not be wise in our own world, in all your ways, what? And then he will do what? That is actually the greatest level of accountability. That you want to make, you want to take certain decisions and you ask the Holy Spirit and you ask God and you're telling him I can't do this thing except you give me a direction. A lot of times our own wisdom, you know, what we think in our hearts finds a way of looking right. There is this Igbo adage that but why has People, if everybody is carrying that bag of wisdom, why are there a lot of foolish men? Because a lot of things we think is wise in the long run looks foolish. You know, there's this ecstasy that comes with youthfulness. You will think that this idea, this idea, a lot of times you go and try what we call unrefined ideas. No matter how beautiful some ideas are, it needs to be refined through the wisdom of the world. Believe me. Because that's why some people have, they've lost their money. You remember the day you came and told me about one business? We talked about it. We wanted to do it. We said, let's do it next time. We wanted to do it. We did it next time. The last time we came, we found out that the business has closed. They told me about one. Listen, I said I will, inv- I will put you people involved. I said, this Sunday I'm going to do my own. The Spirit of the Lord told me, man of God, wait till tomorrow. I said, no problem. The next day, I said, man of God, wait till. As I was waiting and waiting and waiting, the next thing I was going on, on, on online, I said, ah, they've crashed. Oh. I said, thank God. But I, the truth is that I asked for counsel. I can't just because I think I'm wise. I'm an analyst by profession. So if I use my profession, you know, sometimes even your profession will fail you. You need to open up to certain people. Sometimes there are certain businesses I want to do. I'll just go to my dad. I said, this is what I want to do. This is a man that has done business for over 40 years. And you think you have the, wonder, the brightest idea. That's wonderful. Go and meet them first. That's when you know, you know, sometimes you think you're wise till you meet a wise man. Huh? 
You think you're wise, you meet what? Oh, you meet a wise man, you find out I'm, 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 you will see your foolishness. Hello? Just like yesterday. Joining before. <laughs> you know? That's the point. You, no man can know it all. No man can have it all. Because of that, you must be accountable to somebody. You see the way you are as Christians. Let me ask you a question. Maybe I'll close with this in the first service. Maybe I'll close with this. And this, let this be an eye-opener. You come to church every Sunday. Nobody knows about you. Nobody, you don't want it. The day Satan will take you out from the household of faith, nobody will know. And I know you're going to go and say, I was joining, I've been in this church for the last five years. And nobody's asking after me. Go and connect yourself. Someone say, connect yourself. You can connect yourself. I think the message of yesterday was connected to fruitfulness. Connect yourself somewhere. No single branch can grow and produce fruit except it's connected to a tree. I wonder how people think. I wonder how people think that they can do exploits spiritually being isolated. Nothing grows in isolation. If you come and you see only a tree, it is prone to attack than when there are lots of trees. If we come now and there are 100 trees here and we tell you to break it down, if only the sight of the 100, you'll be discouraged. But if you see only one, no matter how big that is, but it's only one, you have hope that you can break it down. This is what happens to you when you are not connected to people, when you are not accountable to people. You are easy for the enemy to get. But when you are plenty, the enemy knows that if he comes for you, somebody will still drag you. That is why when you are trying to mess up, that your best friend is saying, oh God, this is, this is not what we agreed. Come back to this place. Come back to this place. Some of, you, some of us don't like it. We don't like accountability naturally. Somebody will call us. You know, especially those people, you know, the way I am now. People can sing my praise, sing my praise. I go to bishop, bishop will say, ah, mm, you're not doing this thing well. But you need people like that to go further in life. You don't need oh yes members every day. You need people who will look you in the face. Because there's always a way, there's always a place for improvement in your life. You have not gotten to perfection. You will never get to perfection. Only Christ can perfect the church. So there is still an area of improvement. That's why you need accountability. And it's not just to God. Because God will always mature you through other people. Even Jesus himself was trained. After I was a part of the apostle. Have you ever heard of a man called uh, Gaius? Is that his name? Uh, Galilea. Gamilia. Huh? With all the encounters he had with Christ. He still had to go to it for three years. He said, go and learn. I know you have learned the scripture also. I know. Go and learn from this man. In fact, after he had the encounters with God, God sent him to the house of a man. He said, when you go there, he's going to pray for you. If he prays for you, the scroll will fall off your eyes. You. You. Just small, small light you got. You have called yourself that the Jew three times. 17 years, Papa. Hey. I need nobody. Nobody who, mentoring me. In fact, they are rubbing shoulders with. <laughs> the way they, they call fathers of faith with such impunity. Just because God just woke them up one night and gave them a vision. All of a sudden, they have become a father of faith. That's why now, every small birthday, God's general. Even people will never be sergeant. 
are answering God's general online. Happy birthday to God's general. Who is general? But you see, that thing is a function of lack of accountability. Because if you have fathers that are accountable to people, they will tell you that there is certain fame that is just a setup. Hello? There is certain att attention that is a setup for the downfall of a man. You need fathers who will spot such thing and tell you to withdraw from the crowd. From the cross. Actually, when you read the life of Christ, do you know Christ was actually in a way accountable to Peter? Go and read your Bible well. There are certain things that will happen. Peter will pull Jesus aside and tell him, let us leave this place. He was the son of God. He was the son of God. But he kept himself accountable to certain people. They knew a lot of things. In fact, Jesus did not handle his money. He actually even gave it to Judas. Because if he handles this money, something might tempt him more, and Jesus will be saying something else that they did not send him here for. Do you know what it means that Peter will draw the Son of God out to give him small warning? Say, Baba, you don't do this. Oh. You, even your father cannot talk to you. Because you went to school, he did not go to, but he was one that sent you to school. Huh? The moment a girl of 21 years gets married, she becomes a marriage counselor and starts talking to 35 year old ladies like uh, a 40 year old woman. My dear, you are still a very young baby. You're coming now. That's what happens now. I think they've arrived. Accountability is very important in this our journey. I will close with this. One of the reasons you see a lot of you see a lot of things happening in the body of Christ because a lot of people are not accountable. A pastor will just come and tell you that he's serving you jig today. And you drink jig as if it was you got and die because there is no accountability. If, if there were fathers, if there were elders, certain things would not be happening. Jesus, who is the son of God, had 12 people to consult with. You. You. Son of who? You have nobody to consult with. Even God reasons with men. If I do this, if I do this. God reveals his plans to men. He does not hide certain things from his servant Abraham. Abraham. You know why God shows Abraham some of those things? This is what I want to do. And this is what is going to happen. Oh. Abraham, if you think it is not, tell me, let us reason together. That was why he was reasoning together when he said he was going to destroy Sodom. And he was giving him a soft landing. Okay, if I can find ten now. Not because if he killed them at instantly, he will still not be just. He will still be just. Yet, he will still. You, you just step up one day and do. Without accountability, you are heading for a crash. In your life, in your business, anywhere. Somebody, you must look up to somebody, somebody must mentor you. Stand to your feet, everybody. I'm going to call Pastor Joshua to come and pray for us. Any man who is going to be accountable is going to be humble. Can you open your mouth and ask the Lord that you receive the grace of humility? The grace of humility. So that you can be teachable, so that you can learn. Lift up your voice and make that prayer this morning. 
Somebody is praying. Asking the Lord to help you become accountable. Accountability makes for success in all spheres of life. Ask the Lord to help you as an individual, as a family, and also as a church. Ask the Lord to help you. Our pastor said that remove accountability in life, one is headed for a crash. And that is true. Just ask the Lord to help you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. We receive the grace to become accountable in all areas of our lives. Thank you for your servant whom you've used to open our eyes to this truth in your word. Lord, we ask for a refilling. We ask that you empower him the more. We ask that you will help him to keep on in this journey of faith. As well as everyone standing here this morning, we receive grace to keep on in this journey of faith. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. And let the living echo a loudest amen. amen. Touch your neighbor, tell your neighbor. I hope you become accountable. Tell your neighbor once more, receive the grace to become more accountable. Hallelujah. Can you just take a few seconds? Package your tithe, package your offering. Our pastor will always say that the gospel is free, but it costs money. To push it across nations. The Bible will always say it is more blessings to give than to receive. Forgive and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, shall men give to your bosom. Can you please stand to your feet? Lift it above your head. If you have your tight, please lift it up. Lift it up. God bless you as you stand to your feet, everybody. Father, we thank you for the giving grace. Thank you for the privilege to be part of what you're doing in this season. Thank you for your life at work in us. As many that have nothing to give because of one reason or the other,